Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the seventh Sunday of Easter here at Bethel Lutheran Church. Uh, we're recording this live in front of a wonderful congregation this morning who are going to join their voices with the parts that you get to say at home. If you have the Remind app, please remember to print this out. And um, if you have your Bible available in the description, you'll see the verses for today, uh, the Bible readings for today. So please get that ready before we start and have it ready so that you can uh, read along with uh, my son Joe, who is going to be reading today. Um, and um, thank you for being with us. Uh, just a reminder quickly, next week we will hopefully, uh, God willing, be outside worshiping live at 10 o'clock on May 31st. That Sunday, May 31st, to celebrate Pentecost. And we'll, uh, everybody will be need to bring chairs. Or if you don't feel comfortable bringing a chair and sitting outside with us, come and sit in your car. We will also try and record that service. That's just one more thing that we have to figure out. So we'll work on that too. Um, so thank you for being with us today. Our service today is based off of Divine Service Setting 1. You can do a search for that too if you don't have the, the app to get our service. And we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsively by whole verse, Psalm 68. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so you shall drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so the wicked shall perish before God. But the righteous shall be glad. They shall exalt before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the deserts. His name is the Lord. Exalt before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a parched land. O oh God, you went out before your people when you marched through the wilderness. The earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one of Sinai. Before God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God. You shed abroad, you restored your inheritance as it is languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God. You provided for the needy. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here and everywhere their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all the heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
first reading is from Acts chapter 1. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James, all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled. With the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in ministry. Now this man brought a field with the reward of his wickedness and falling headlong he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language a keldamah, that is field of blood for it is written in the book of Psalms may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in, his, in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle reading for the day comes from 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name, for it, is, for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is sacredly saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our verse for today. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
When Jesus, had, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn for today is Hymn 730, What is the World to Me? Our text for today is from 1 Peter chapter 1, or chap, sorry, chapter 4, uh, verse 19. Therefore, let those of you who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
we don't like this chapter. We don't like actually the end of 1 Peter at all. Because in the end of 1 Peter, it tells us we're going to suffer. What Joe read earlier, don't be surprised when fiery trials come upon you. Don't be surprised when the world hates you. Don't be surprised when your neighbors hate you. Don't be surprised when your family, and yes, sometimes your family, hates you on account of Jesus Christ. Because you are putting the priorities of God in front of the priorities of the world, the priorities of the sinful flesh, and of course the priorities of the devil. Because he doesn't want God's priorities to rule in your life at all. So Peter tells the people of God, don't be surprised when these trials come upon you. Don't be surprised when you have problems. Don't be surprised when you have sicknesses, when you have pains. And right now with the whole pandemic thing, with COVID-19, coronavirus, however you want to say it, we have a lot of people that are putting out there, well, I'll put my trust in God and He won't let me get sick. That's like the people who go off and they play with snakes and they're like, well, I'm going to just play in this bed of vipers and if they bite me, I won't die. Well, yes, that is in Mark 16 that there will be people that can do that. But it's never encouraged. Hey, go play in snakes and get bit all the time and it's fine. So right now, we get to be a little bit more prudent, and we get to say, well, okay, if it's God's will I get sick, okay, I'll praise Him when I get sick. If it's God's will that I stay healthy, okay, I'll praise Him if I'm healthy. But to put it off and say, well, I'll never get sick because I've got God on my side, is nothing that's ever said in the Bible. If you look at the lives of the disciples, the, the disciples who became apostles, if they would have had that mindset of, well, God's protecting me and I'll never get sick because I'm doing God's work and nobody will ever hate me and nothing bad will happen to me, nothing ever would have happened because they never would have gone anywhere. And the church actually prospers and it flourishes in times when it's being persecuted and when it's being put down. You know, the internet before, and it still is, is flooded with pornography, it's flooded with child abductions, it's flooded with a whole bunch of predators, it's flooded with ugh, filth. And before this, a lot of churches were shying away from the, the internet, me included, because online worship allows for there would be a lot of laziness in Christians. Because the Bible does tell us, gather together, encourage one another, build each other up as you see each other, as you eat, eat, eat with each other, as you commune with each other. And so online worship has a tendency to create Christians that just, they watch the show they want to watch. And then, what they do is, they turn it off when it gets to a point that's boring for them. Or, if they don't like the music, they'll go and watch something else. Or, if they don't like the message, they'll go and find the message that they want. Which is exactly what Paul warned Timothy about when he said, Hey, there'll be a time when pure doctrine won't be treasured by anybody. But people with itching ears will go and they'll seek whatever they can and whatever they'll find. And they'll find the people that make them feel good about themselves, as opposed to telling them the truth about Jesus Christ. And so, I understand why churches were shying away from being on the internet. And then God see, saw fit to have a virus. And yes, you can blame whoever you want out there in the world. I know there's people out there blaming China. There's people blaming Trump. There's people blaming the ants. I don't know. The mole people did it. It's them. We'll bring up the oldie and goodie. But really, if you look at what's happening, we're flooding the internet with God's word now. 
We're flooding Facebook with posts, with devotions, with God's Word, with um, people explaining God's Word truthfully, and some people not. We're flooding the Internet with good news. And it's in these times of being separated from each other that we look for new ways to reach out. And so we reach out virtually so that we can reach out in person later. And so we build each other up virtually so that later we can gather back together again. And so we look at these times and we go, well, if we get sick, we get sick. I'm still going to praise God. And we thank Him for the fact that He's allowing us to do this. Because we didn't do this before. Bethel Lutheran Church did not have an online presence really before. We had a really bad website, and I apologize for that. We had a Facebook page that was for our VBS. It wasn't used very often. We had people that weren't being reached who easily could have been. And yet God saw fit to give us what we thought at first was a fiery trial and what a lot of pastors and a lot of church workers right now are still calling a fiery trial because, well, some people got to go home and sit and watch movies. And I've seen a lot of people streaming a lot of things. A lot of church workers are sitting there going, when do you have time to do that anymore? And I'm just thankful that I have time to spend with my family. So, we call this sort of a fiery trial. And we're not surprised by it. We look for the good. We look for the way God is blessing us through these times. And we know that it's not separating us from God. It's not separating us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. But sometimes when you have struggles, when you have trials, when you have tribulations, that's when the biggest blessings come. That's when your eyes are open to actually seeing God work in your life. When you do get to do, as Peter said just shortly after this, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. And then he continues with, be sober-minded, be watchful. Then he warns us about the devil. And this is one of the things that I absolutely love about the way Peter puts things. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around. But he doesn't prowl around like a smart lion. He doesn't prowl around like the lion that's going to catch food. He prowls around like a stupid lion. That stupid lion is looking for people that aren't listening. People that are so self-focused, that are looking in on themselves and self-pity, going, Why am I such a pain? And why do I get sick? Why do I suffer? Why don't you love me? Those people that are so deaf to the world around them, deaf to the blessings that God has put in their lives, the devil's looking for those because he can roar all he wants and they still won't hear him. That's who the devil's looking for. The people that are focused purely on self, self-gratification, and looking for self-improvement and not looking for God's improvement. People that have turned their backs on God's blessings. And they see everything that goes wrong as such a big problem in their life. Instead of an opportunity. And the devil gets them. The tempter gets them. And he tempts them away from God. It's happened way too often. And so Peter warns us. Humble yourselves. Realize that those trials you're going through might actually be a blessing for you and they actually will be a blessing for somebody later. You might have to go through momentary pain. 
You might have to go through momentary suffering. But rejoice. And this is one of the major themes in 1 Peter. Rejoice because your place in heaven is secure. Because your place in heaven has been paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Because you are free from the worries of this world. You're free from the anxieties of this world. You're free from the cares that this world puts on you. You are dearly loved. And nothing can come between you and God. Nothing can break that bond because God has promised that He is with you. And that that bond will stay secure. I'm going to shift to Paul for now in the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 8. And this talks to exactly what Peter is getting at and exactly what we're living through right now. This is Romans chapter 8 beginning at verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? And then he continues later. You can read the rest of that. Or again, Romans 8, beginning at verse 31. And then 35. Who shall separate, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Did you catch famine in there? Persecution, distress, tribulation? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You can add to that virus. You can add to that neighbors. You can add to that family. You can add to that friends. You can add to that enemies. None of those will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He has called you by name. You are His. As we live in this time of the in-between time, the ten days between Ascension and Pentecost, you get to see what the disciples did. They went ahead and they elected a new apostle, Matthias whose name we hardly ever see in anything. Actually, we don't see it again in the Bible at all. But Justice, the guy who got passed up, who probably would have, if he was done today, probably would have stomped off and said, I'm leaving the church! He's the one who's selected to go out with Paul. He's the one who has a place in Colossae, who helps Paul set up a church there. And we hear about him a couple more times in the Bible. He didn't get all huffy and puffy. He didn't say, you passed up on me. I don't need you like so many times happens in churches. He worked. He moved forward. And he didn't let one momentary thing where he didn't get the job or didn't get selected the way he thought he should. He didn't let that stop him. He went forward and he lived a life that glorified God. And we get to do the same. Through all our trials, through our troubles, through all our tribulations, we focus on the one truth that is always there. We are God's children. We are dearly loved. And we have our place in heaven secure for us. And we go to seek and to save those people who are lost. Don't be so deaf that the devil can come up and eat you. Don't be so blind to see only the hardships and the troubles in life. And never let those things mute your voice. Be God's witness. 
here and everywhere at all times. Amen. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service continues with the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Are there any special prayer requests today? Okay, I can't think of any. All right. Let us pray then. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you are doing for us. We thank you for the joy that you have put before us and the peace that you give us as Christians. And we ask you, Lord, that you would help us to focus on that every single day of our lives. Thank you for all that you are doing here at Bethel. Those little projects that have become big projects and are now moving forward. We ask you for your guidance, for your peace, and we ask for people to support those things as we move forward with the ministry you have put in front of us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. help us to never be deaf to your word. Help us to never be blind to your blessings. And help us always to fight that muteness that the world wants us to have when it comes to speaking your truth to people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, bless all those who are sick and suffering right now. Be with those people who are dealing with the virus. Be with those people who are dealing with other health problems. Be with those people who no one knows is suffering. Help the caregivers to be strong. Help them to stay healthy. Help them to stay wise. We ask you, Lord, to bless all those people who are out there on the front lines fighting for us right now for our military, for the doctors, for nurses. Thank you for the teachers and the parents doing their jobs at the end of the school year. Thank you for all those who are still in school and still have to do those battles with each other and their kids. We ask you also, Lord, that you would bless the government officials as they make decisions to reopen or not reopen and help it to be a blessing to us as we know that we are cared for by our officials. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, help us as we move forward. Help us uh, to continue to focus on what you have put in front of us. And help us every day to be flexible enough to deal with those things that you have given us to do. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, this weekend we get to thank you in a special way for those people who have served and given their lives for our, our country. We ask you this Memorial Day that it wouldn't just be a time of celebration, but it would be a time of remembrance and a time of refocusing on sometimes those things that we have take sacrifice. And we thank you for those who have given of their lives so that we can be free. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask you to be with the Simonson family as they have now laid Carly to rest. You have taken her to your arms, and we thank you for the peace that she now has. Now bless the family with peace. Support them, surround them with your love and your care. Do that for all those who are dealing with the sting of death right now, that they might know your love and know your care and be aware that you are still there throughout all of these trials that we have. Lord, in your mercy, all these things we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, you bless us with so many things that we can't even number those blessings you've given us. Help us to make your word the first thing in our lives. Help us to proclaim your glories to all that we reach. And help us every day to seek your will and to know that we are protected by you. But in those times that we suffer, we still get to glorify you. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look up his, lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Have a great week. See you next week. Pentecost. Woo! Woo!